now we can see about the iron and manganese present in water iron and manganese causes to the water iron and manganese are generally present in uh, suspension as hydroxide oxides or in solution as bicarbonates with the water it is either soluble or colloidal or insoluble ferrous is soluble and ferric is insoluble state iron and manganese are like a twin brothers mostly present together more than 0.3 ppm of iron and 0.05 ppm of uh, manganese is difficult to remove and it is uh, allowed less than that limit only ferrous in water is colorless and clear but when exposed to air it becomes reddish brown and ferric iron precipitates so if you collect water in a bucket or in your overhead tank after some time it will become brown so that is a uh, ferrous present in your water that is after oxidizing it become uh, brownish color iron and manganese in water gives unpleasant taste water it causes staining in plumbing fixtures clothing and you send your clothes for laundry you can see the brown color tint in the cloth particularly in white color cloth that is due to the presence of iron and manganese in the water from the water they have laundered the cloth so that uh, stain stain or brown color tint is coming during the laundry accumulation of precipitated iron in water leads to growth of iron bacteria called crinothrix sulfur iron causes acidity and corrosive reaction this iron bacteria if it is not getting removed uh, by means of the skimmer deck or that is skin we discussed earlier in earlier episodes then that will carry over as uh, iron and uh, that will clog the further bed in you dig a bore well and the water is having uh, iron and manganese whether it is ferrous or ferric if it is ferrous as we discussed in the previous slide it will be clear and colorless when you put it in a tank or in bucket it will become reddish brown that will become uh, oxidized to ferric so this moderate level of iron and manganese combined concentration up to 15 mg per liter or 15 ppm can be treated with an oxidizing filter that the iron present in uh, uh, water borel water particularly it can be oxidized and filtered with a manganese acid filter iron removal method by using air oxidation 0.14 parts per million oxygen is required for iron and 0.21 ppm of air is required for manganese to oxidize the iron and manganese together with slight agitation of air itself is sufficient for this method a small chemical feed pump is used to feed the chlorine normally sodium hypochlorite is used from a small tank or a small carboy you can use it for the domestic uh, treatment and that can be injected the solution to be injected to the borehole water at the upstream of the mixing tank before uh, before settling or coil of the plastic pipe should be followed by the settling and the filtration in a separate tank filtration is by mno2 filter that is magnesium zeolite bed filter the magnesium zeolite bed must be backwashed once in a day and occasionally regenerated by potassium permanganate when it loses uh, strength that is when it is exhausted it will be it will occur once in 6 months or once in year we can do it If the iron content is more then we have to go for the pre treatment only this is a schematic diagram of domestic iron removal plant this is a over a tank this is a borewell water pump borewell and this is a sodium hypochlorite dosing system or dosing tank this is the separation tank and precipitated iron free water and it is and remol manganese zeolite or mno2 filter instead of this uh, concrete tank we can have two separate stb tank one little bit higher elevated a position and the water coming to this one at a lower elevation from there we can keep some suction 
above one feet from the bottom. The HEV tank can have a drain line so that the sludge or uh, collected uh, or deposited iron or precipitated iron can be removed regularly or frequently. Now, when the borehole is started, you have to start the dosing pump also. Or if it is in automatic, after starting the pump, the dosing will start automatically. You can regulate the dosing accordingly based on the requirement. So, when the borehole pump is started and dosing also started, dosing uh, chlorine will improve the oxidation or aeration more effectively. So, this is to be distributed through pipes or nozzle. And this is the piping arrangement. You can have a distribution nozzle with a single pipe also. When it is distributed, the water is distributed to small droplets and the air is coming to contact. If you want to have a fan or something, you can have to give more uh, aeration. You can keep your fan here. Otherwise, you can keep the HTP tank lid open and with a shower like arrangement can be provided instead of the nozzle. So the inlet water can be admitted through the STB tank through a small shower where the water gets uh, droplets and it is getting mixed with the air from the atmospheric air or if you provide a fan, small fan like arrangement then it will oxidize the ferrous to ferric. So that will get collected, the ferric salt will get precipitated or deposited at the bottom of the tank. Then from that little bit of water tank that can be transfer to the next STB tank or like this arrangement is there when it will go to the next tank on that uh, ferric insoluble uh, so iron with the water is coming to the um, manganese zeolite filter for further treatment the pump arrangement is there it should be one one feet above the bottom so that to avoid the carrier of uh, deposited uh, are in precipitated iron to the pump section. So the water is pumped to the M1 water filter where the insoluble salt and the soluble iron and manganese are getting removed and the treated or iron free iron and manganese free water is sent to the overhead tank. This back this M1 water filter or manganese gas geolite filters to be backwards once in a day and we can drain the sludge daily also to avoid the carryover and you can clean the SDB tank if it is easy to move and easy to clean once in two days so that the carryover will be avoided instead of keeping the SDB tank separately in, uh, in place of the scan crate that is very cheaper and best method to remove iron water iron and manganese from our borewell water. This is the cheap and best method for domestic purpose to remove iron and manganese. You can remove up to 15 ppm of iron and manganese together in the borewell water. So iron free water you can have by this oxidation and filtration method treatment. Earlier you have seen about the iron and manganese removal from borewell water. Now we can see how iron is removed inside the pipelines by the method called acid pickling. Pickling refers to a treatment that is used to remove impurities rust scale from the surface of a material mainly inside the pipeline. Normally it is done for the cooling water line or boiler or boiler connect, connect line connected to boilers. It is a metal treatment process that removes superficial impurities from the metal which is called burr. After the erection of the new cooling water line, this is to be done. The pickle liquor or uh, acid used for the pickling varies depending on the type of the metal on which it is used. For low carbon seal, pickle liquor typically consists of hydrochloric acid, which is called muriatic acid. And we can use sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid also. Acetic acid also used in some places. For high carbon seal, on the other hand, we pickle liquor typically contains additional acid along with uh, HCl and sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid or uh, nitric acid can be combined and used for high carbon steel. Normally for cooling water line, acid pickling is done by uh, either with hydrochloric acid or with uh, sulfuric acid. 
hydrochloric acid is uh, preferred over other acid because it is more effective 4 to 5 percent acid is used and it is circulated uh, in the cooling water line and you have to collect the water sample and the water sample is to be checked for iron oil and turbidity now initially the value will increase after uh, to, from 24 hours to 48 hours it should be continued after some time the value start reducing and it will become nil and the value become nil or the iron pickup is reduced then the water is to be drained completely and filled with fresh water and then it is to be followed by the fascination so iron to be removed from the uh, immediately after the erection of the pipeline so that the treatment of uh, cooling water chemical is effective that is called passivation so passivation is to be done only after the acid pickling like uh, cooling water line acid pickling you can see the acid cleaning or acid pickling from boiler and connected line to the boiler after the completion of the boiler erection and all connected lines it is to be done boiler is to be first hydro tested after hydro test the water to be drained then we can go for acid cleaning or acid pickling. Normally, boiler superator is to be backfilled to avoid acid or acid vapor entry before filling the acid. Acid is admitted to the steam drum using a chemical dosing pump, acid pump. It is filled up to separator in the boiler steam drum. Normally, 5% HCl is used with the corrosion inhibitor. Normally, corrosion inhibitor is polyphosphate is used at a flow rate of 0.5 to 1 meter per second and it is circulated using the circulation pump after acid filling is completed it is circulated with the pump it is to be filled with a drum and connected line and also to the technometer after circulation you have to check the iron value in the water when the iron started coming so after circulation one hour 30 minutes then you have to keep it soap for six hours and then the Acid is to be drained and rinsed with the DM water from superator. That is, you have to back, back use the back filling line to admit DM water to wash the acid filled in the steam drum and connected line and the economizer. Acid cleaning is then followed by alkali bilot. Alkali bilot is done using the trisodium phosphate, soda as a sodium carbonate, and the T-poly, a chemical called a chemical which is used as emulsifier or anionic surfactant. Is used for alkali bilot. So alkali bilot is followed by after the acid cleaning or acid pickling in the boiler and connected lines. Now we can see the role of iron in DM plant. Iron fouling will occur in strong, strong acid cation that will spoil the resin. The ferrous ion which comes in the raw water in the soluble state then it will get absorbed or exchanged in the strong acid cation bed. RH plus resin will replace the ferric sol uh, ferrous ion. But if it is uh, get oxidized to ferric, ferrous is uh, converted into ferric which is insoluble, then it will get trapped inside the resin or fold the resin. So the iron folding will occur only when the ferrous is converted into ferric and that becomes insoluble. Another reason is if activated carbon filter is there to remove the free chlorine and organic matter, then that will not occur. If it, the activated carbon filter is uh, not present and uh, if it is present and then get exhausted, then free residual chlorine will slip and the free residual chlorine is an uh, oxidizing agent that will oxidize the ferrous to ferric and the ferric ion which is insoluble will fold the SS resin. Iron folding also will occur because of the iron reducing bacteria or sulfur reducing bacteria which is present in the water get removed by the ischemic duct or dirty skin which you have seen in the earlier episode. The ischemic duct will uh, decompose the iron reducing bacteria and sulfur reducing bacteria and balance uh, bacterial growth uh, in the water and filter the microorganism and ferrous all ferric will not come all, along with the water. If that ischemic duct is disturbed also another reason that the ferrous salt will carry over with the water and that will convert it into ferric and that will fold the SH resin. The ion folding will reduce the resin bed exchange capacity and it will increase delta free across the bed and it will break the resin to fine so the life of the resin is reduced. If the ion folding can be 
treated by soaking SAC bed with a 10% SPL acid for about 12 hours to 24 hours. Then we have to drain the acid. Then we have to admit 2 to 5% brine solution or sodium chloride salt solution to exert the bed completely. Then the bed is to be regenerated with double quantity of uh, regenerant. If it is HTSO4 or HCL, we have to regenerate with double quantity after the complete exhaustion of the bed. If HCL is used normally in place of HTSO4, then iron falling is reduced or it will not occur. The complete exhaustion is not. What do you mean by the complete exhaustion is normally when the any bed, strong acid cation or strong base anion or mixed bed, when the slip started coming, initially slipping sodium for a strong acid cation, silica for strong base anion, then it is taken as exhausted or if the yield is attained, then we will go for the regeneration. So, we will not allow the bed to exhaust completely. In this particular condition for removing iron cooling, we have to exhaust the bed completely with the sodium chloride solution that will exhaust completely the RH ion into RNA plus. So, that all the resin will get exhausted. That RNA resin is to be completely converted to RH. So, we have to use double quantity of SPSO for SCL. So, it will re get regenerated with that uh, double quantity and it will back to normal as RH plus ion. So, iron falling is thus, re thus removed by means of HCL soaking followed by double regeneration. Hope you might have understood about the iron, role of iron in uh, boreal water and how it is getting treated and uh, role of iron for iron in pipeline cooling water line or uh, boiler steam drum and connected lines and in uh, dam plant that i bore well how iron is removed the cheap and best method we have seen and uh, how acid pickling helps in cooling water line before passivation and uh, alkali boil out in the boiler before doing alkali boil out how we are removing the iron debris from the boiler after the erection, then we have seen the DM plant uh, SAC bed iron falling and how it is getting treated with the effective method. The next episode I will explain about process wastewater and sanitary wastewater treatment. Do not forget to subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Put your like and comment in the comment box. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode.